Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Police sergeant found guilty of raping 16-year-old student. A police sergeant was found guilty of raping a 16-year-old girl when he appeared in the home circuit court on Monday. Sergeant Christopher Bennett, who worked at the Denhamton Police Station in Kingston Western Division, is to be sentenced on September 4, 2023. Sergeant Bennett was accused of abducting and raping the student on June 17, 2019, along the Palisades Main Road in East Kingston. The abduction charges were discharged after no case submissions. The trial was concluded last month. Allegations are that the cop offered the complainant a ride from the police station and took her to the Palisades Main Road, where he had sex with her against her will. The child later reported the matter to the police, and following investigations, Sergeant Bennett was arrested and charged. St. Catherine sought police to implement strategies aimed at improving security in the division schools. With the back to school season fast approaching, the St. Catherine South Police are planning to implement a series of strategies aimed at improving security in the division schools. In the last school year, schools across Jamaica experienced several incidents of violence, which prompted interventions by the Education Ministry, the police, and others. Speaking as reporters, head of the St. Catherine South Police, Senior Superintendent Christopher Phillips, said as the new academic year approaches, arrangements are being made to boost school security. SSP Phillips also noted, plans to include primary schools under the Safe School Program as institutions at this level are plagued by similar issues facing high schools. He cited sexual misconduct and deviant behaviors as some of the problems exhibited by students at the primary school level. Now is a good time for us to engage with the schools um, in preparation for next academic year and to look on how they can more or less uh, future-proof their facilities going forward. We, St. Catherine South, have a very good working relationship with our schools and one of the things that we're looking on is to see how we can empower prefects within the schools because, you know, technically they help to do some amount of policing. We want to have a training session with those persons before the next academic year starts and, of course, we will be at um, engaging with our Dean of Discipline, Vice Principal, Principals right across the board to see how best they can improve or give them some ideas as to how they can improve security within the schools. Uh, one of the things that we have encouraged is the establishment of security committees within the schools to assist in that regard. So now we are going to be getting down into the primary schools because they too are experiencing um, issues within their schools. Some of the same um, issues, sexual misconduct, um, you know, deviant behaviors and so on. So we can't neglect the primary schools now because these are the same set of students who move into high schools. All right, and the principals have indicated that they need that kind of assistance and support. NWC unions to continue talks Wednesday. The management of the National Water Commission, NWC, and the five unions representing workers are to resume talks at the Labour Ministry on Wednesday, following hours of talks aimed at adverting strike action at the company. Workers are restive over the outstanding matters relating to public sector compensation review process. The Labour Ministry said the unions have agreed to further review the management's revisal proposal before resuming talks on Wednesday at 2 p.m. Labour Minister Pernell Charles Jr. has encouraged all parties to remain in a state of normalcy during the conciliation process. The ministry invited the representatives to talk in response to the 72 hour strike notice that the union said was served on Saturday evening. The issues related to discontent over the pay bonds developed for the NAAC, particularly at the lower end, and the conversion principles, but we do not want to go into details in the media at this time, General Secretary of the Jamaica Association of Local Government Offices, Helen Davis White, told reporters. The more than 2,000 NAAC workers are presented by the Jamaica Association of Legal Government Offices, the Bustamante Industrial Trade Union, the National Works Union, the Union of Public and Private Employee, and the NWC Executive Staff Association. Last year, the workers went on strike for two days, crippling business and public service activities. The NWC lost about $240 million in revenue. Lead doctor impressed with burn victims' progress in U.S. hospital. 
After completing four surgeries and getting ready to complete just one more, 14-year-old burn victim Akila Dunkley could be released from the Joseph M. Still Burn Center at Doctors Hospital in Augusta, Georgia, United States in a month's time. Doctors have been enthused by Akila's progress since she arrived at the facility on June 21. On June 16, Akila, a student of Black River High School in St. Elizabeth, was preparing tea in the early morning before heading off to the institution when a mishap allegedly led to a gas explosion that melted her uniform on her body. When Akila arrived in the USA, it was five days after she got burned. Not ideal, but it was better than never, according to Dr. Hassan, president of the JMS Burn Center. Dr. Hassan commended the University Hospital of the West Indies for doing all they could to keep Akila alive before she was flown to the U.S. At least she got here, Hassan said. Her total body surface area was 50%. This is a big burn, even for the USA, for Jamaica and other third world countries, like the country that I came from, Bangladesh. If someone gets even 40% burns, it is a death sentence. They can't do anything. When she came here, I was very happy that the doctors in Jamaica, with minimal resources, did a phenomenal job. Akila did not get infected and did not get skeptic. As soon as she came, I checked her out with my team and decided to go to the operating room the next day because she was very dry. We would have taken her to the operating room the same day if we could. Fortunately, most of her burns were second degree. We took a small amount of skin from her hip era to do a resell. Dr. Hassan added, we spread the resell on both arms and the face. The other areas were deeply burned, right hand and both lower legs. We had to shave off dead, cell, dead tissue and put cover their skin. That was the first surgery we did. The next surgery we did on June 28, 2023. On July 3, 2023, we took her to the operating room and did a whole dressing change and took the skin off the lower leg to prepare for skin grafting. Skin grafting was done July 5, 2023, and we harvested the skin for her back and grafted both legs and right hand. She is talking and doing really well. She will go back to operating room on Wednesday for another dressing change and all the samples from it will be removed so we can feel better. Dr. Hassan shared that he is a believer in God and always asks Almighty to help him do no harm to his patients. He told reporters that he had mixed feelings when he first received Akela. The first feeling was bad because she's only 14 years old and had 50% of her body burned. The good feeling came after we examined her. I felt this was not so bad and I thought we could get her better in a short space of time. The future is very difficult to predict, but I have been doing medicine for about 42 years now. I have been doing burnt for 25 years so. <sighs> With my limited experience, I would say probably about 4 or 6 weeks she would be able to go back to Jamaica. 5 burn surgeons, 3 pediatricians and roughly 30 mid-level practitioners were to ensure Akila's survival. Her father, Mr. Dunkley, said he did not have the words to explain how grateful he was and express that with God in the vessel, we can smile at the storm. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell.